What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. In a previous video that I produced, we showed you, or we talked about the philosophies of diving and the practicalities behind those philosophies. And I've got a lot of great responses. I want to thank everybody for being very respectful in the comment section. Uh, I, I really appreciate all the comments. I appreciate learning from you guys and getting your opinions in the matter. But in that video, I showed you that I used the silicone necklace for all my alternates. Uh, but however, on one, I had a twine necklace tied on. And I want to explain why there's a twine necklace on here real quick. First of all, I do not use the twine necklace. I actually use the silicone necklace. But during a recent checkout dive, I had a student who was doing a regulator drill, and their necklace actually broke underwater. Um, and the necklace part didn't, but the part that holds the mouthpiece actually broke when they were under there. And I don't know if it was because it was dry rot rotted or maybe somehow it got cut or it just had reached its uh, maximum stretch limit or whatnot and it broke. But instead of having them complete their dive with their alternate dangling through the mud and through the sand, basically I took my alternate off or took my alternate out of the necklace, took the necklace off and I gave it to them underwater. So I fixed their problem really quick. We didn't have to abort the dive. Um, but in reality, all I did was transfer the problem to me. Now it was something that I was uh, comfortable with. I didn't mind. I don't mind actually rolling a hose and putting it through a d-ring or something like that but i was very fortunate that because of where we were at the quarry that we were at all the items in the quarry are tied up with rope so from one platform to the next there's a rope going to it or from a platform to a school bus there's a rope going to it and our quarry managers actually had they leave extra rope when they're there so when they tie up something they take the excess rope and they kind of loop it up and so that's basically where this come from. This was an extra little bit of twine that they had that tied two objects together. This was an extra bit of twine. And all I did was just took my shears off the BC, cut me a little length of it, and I fashioned to me a regulator necklace out of it. So instead of aborting a dive or instead of letting my alternate drag through the mud, I fashioned me a necklace. I fixed the problem real quick. It took me about three minutes to fix the problem. And then I was able to continue my dive safely and comfortably. Well, I'm going to show you how I did that. So basically all I did was took a length of line or rope or twine, whatever you want to call it, and I made a prusik out of it. And if you don't know what a prusik is, basically we use it when we do repelling and stuff like that. But I just took a length of line, I tied a prusik knot on one end, another prusik knot on the other end, and that created basically the same thing that this is here. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to do it. Now to do that, of course, you've got to have line with you. And typically we all carry reels with us. And this is probably some of the best line out there. It's, it's a quick fix that you can use underwater. All you do is just take off a certain length of line. Okay, so you just pull you off a length of line. You take your knife or your shears and you simply cut that length of line, which I did here. And then I'm going to fashion this or make this into a necklace. Now to do that, I want to make sure that I have a sufficient amount of line that I can still get it around my neck while I'm underwater. And the way that you do that is you take your old necklace, you lay it down beside it while you're underwater, and you can kind of see that I've got a little bit more here than what I need. However, this one stretches. With this one not stretching, I need to make it a little bit longer than what I've got. So I've got my length of line here, and to tie a Prusik knot, it's actually very simple to do. I'm going to have two working ends, and then I'm going to have a static part of the rest of the line. The working ends is what I want to focus on. And we're always going to be working in the opposite direction of the direction that the working ends is going. So if this one's going to the right, I'm going to work to the left. If this one's going to the left, I'm going to work back to the right. And the way that I do it is I just take the line, put one on top of the other. So I've got the working end up on top of the static part of the line. And all I'm going to do is create a loop. So I'm going to go over the line and create a loop. Now you can use your finger as a guide if you like. I'm going to actually pull it out so you can see it here on camera. But I just created a loop up over that line as well. It doesn't have to be a big loop. But now I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to create a secondary loop. So I'm just going to go over the static end again and create another loop. Now, as you can see, I have two clear, distinct loops there. Now, to cinch this down, all you have to do is go over the line one more time and take the working end through those two loops. And once you have it through the two loops, you can simply tighten that knot down. And that knot is actually called a Prusik knot. And the benefit to that is, is I can actually take the working end, if you will, I can tighten it or I can loosen it very easy. It's basically a modified slip knot or a slip knot, if you will. 
but we call them Prusik knots here where we're at. And so basically, I've created a Prusik. All I've got to do is simply repeat the process with this end here. You can either work it in reverse here. What I like to do to make it easy is I simply flip it over, and that way I can work in the exact same direction I did. Once again, I take the line up and over, create a loop, working in the opposite direction. Take the line up and over again, creating another loop. So I have two distinct loops here. I have my first loop, my second loop. I have my working end here, and all I've got to do with it is go over the line one more time and through those two loops, and I can cinch it down. And essentially, I've created a Prusik for climbing or essentially two Prusik knots that's going to simulate the exact same thing that that necklace is there. Now, I can very easily take my alternate while underwater, stick it up through the loop that I created between the two Prusik knots and simply give it a little tug. It's nice and secure. It's going to hang around my neck. And as long as you don't make this too awfully tight, you can still utilize it. Say if you needed to donate to a buddy, if you was to pull them both at the same time, it's still quick release. You can donate to a buddy. Very easily just loosen it back up when you need to reattach and you can reattach it and utilize that while you're underwater. Now, let me stress this. If you want to tie your own, I probably wouldn't use cave line if you're going to use this as your primary alternate holder. I would probably use a braided rope or some system like that. But if you want to use a necklace and you have that problem underwater of where it breaks, you can very easily take the line off your reel, cut a small little section off, tying two Prusiks in, you can essentially make one of these underwater so that you can save your dive, you don't have to abort your dive, and you also prevent your alternate from dragging down in the mud. Now, carry an extra line with you. We all know that when you buy a reel system, it always comes with too much line. Go ahead and pull some of that line off, cut it, and then put that line in your save a dive kit because there's many different uses that you can use this extra line for. Me personally, not only do I use it for makeshift necklaces, I can also use it to tie off bolt snaps maybe to my high pressure hose or even to my low pressure hose in a side mount situation. So there's many different benefits to carrying this with you. But guys, that's why I had that on that uh, second stage simply because I had to donate mine to a buddy underwater or to a student and thankfully I just come across uh, a little bit of extra line that was there and I made a necklace out of it and to be honest I've just been too lazy to switch it back out for a silicone necklace and I've kind of left it on there but guys if you have real line with you you can utilize it to fix that problem while underwater and you don't have to abort your dive and you definitely don't have to let your alternate hang while you're underwater. Let me show you two more quick little tips that you can do to secure your alternate even if you didn't have a line with you. All right guys, another quick fix to hold your alternate if you have to fix this problem underwater is to use a snorkel keeper. And it's very easy to do. All you do is just take your snorkel keeper, you uh, go up through a D-ring like so, and then pull it through itself. You're gonna create a girth hitch on there. And that simply attaches it to your system. Uh, and where do you get a snorkel keeper from? Of course, your snorkel, right? So you're gonna take the mouthpiece, you're gonna pull it up through the um, snorkel keeper, and of course it hangs there. And it's real easy to get to. You simply pull it out in the event that you need it. Now, if you don't carry a snorkel with you, I personally use the uh, foldable snorkels that go in my pocket, and they come with a plastic clip, so I don't really have this. I do keep these in my save-a-dive kits, but your save-a-dive kit only works on land. And what we're talking about in this video, of course, is how to fix that problem underwater. Now, the last little method I'm going to show you, you've got to be careful depending on how large the D-ring is. Um, and obviously, a mile flex hose is going to be better than a rubber hose in this situation. But all you got to do is take your hose with your uh, regulator going down, and you're just going to create a little loop in it like that. We're not going to twist the loop. We're not going to kink the loop or anything like that. We're just going to create a loop in it, just like that right there. And you're going to go up through the bottom of your D-ring. And it's important that we go through the bottom of the D-ring instead of through the top. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. Now, it looks kind of chaotic here, but it's a good way to secure your alternate in that situation where you need to, for whatever reason, maybe your clip broke, maybe your necklace broke, and it's very easy to get to. Now, with a Myliflex hose, it's a little bit easier to detach this in the event that you need it. Now, obviously, with a long enough hose, you can simply go to your mouth and you don't have to. But if you're donating this to a buddy or whatnot, all you've got to do is just simply pull down and you can donate out. Now, once again, with the Myoflex hose, it makes it easier than a rubber hose. But let me show you why you always go from the bottom up versus the top down. If I was to put this in through the top down, 
for me to do a quick release uh, maneuver on this, uh, I'm going to have to extend my arm way, way up. And if you're in a thick dry suit or something like that, you may not be able to do that. All right, of course, you can pull it up with multiple hands and make it easier for you. But it's very easy just to push from the bottom up through the D-ring. And then it's one easy fluid motion. All you do is simply grab your alternate. You simply pull your arm, extend it out, and you can very easily donate it to your buddy. So guys, that are three ways that you can fix a problem. Simply use a little bit of line off your reel. You can use a snorkel keeper if you got one with you, or you can simply utilize the D-ring as a makeshift holder for your alternate. Now, this is not something that I would utilize every time you go diving. This is simply for the time that you're underwater, that problem happens and you need to fix that problem, such as I had to donate my necklace to a student, I can very easily utilize either this method, I can tie some line using the method I showed you, or I can simply use a snorkel keeper. All three methods are quick release so that I can donate over and it gets my alternate out of the mud, out of the sand, and it actually protects it and puts it in that triangular area where I need it. Guys, I hope you like this tip and I hope you understand in that previous video, that's why I had that twine uh, tied off to my second stage simply because I had to. I was a spur of the moment problem that I needed to fix for a student and I simply fixed it. You can do the exact same thing with your uh, cave line or your reel line very easily tied off. You can use a D-ring or anything like that to simply fix the problem. Guys, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, simply smash that like button for me and definitely share the video as well. Guys, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recover videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.